Hello, it's an honor to have you tuned in. You're watching Hot Issues on TV3, and my name is Nuong Falong. On our seat today, we have a man who spent 29 years of active service with the Ghana Police Force. He exited the service as the Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department, CID. Of course, his time in the force was marked by both successes and controversies. On our hot seat today is COP Bright Odru. Hello, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. How is retirement going for you? Thank you. And uh, uh, retirement is um, somehow, let's see, smooth and uh, sweet because uh, if you retire from the police service, uh, you don't have the pressures of work any longer. Uh, some people see me and they say, I have even grown younger and I look younger than I <laughs> Younger than when, when you were when in the police I, service? Yes, because probably there was so much pressure on us. Are you happy on retirement? Um, um, you know, I hear you saying it's m more relaxing, it makes you feel younger, but are you happy? Because at the time you, you left service, you were not exactly um, happy about leaving. You actually threw a few accusations, specifically at um, Kennedy Japong, the Honorable Kennedy Japong, and the Honorable uh, Kandapa. You blamed them for your exit from the service. Well, and you wanted to stay on for a few more months. Yeah, you see, I should have retired on the 3rd January 2018. And uh, be proud to retirement, you need to proceed on leave mm. for 126 days. And so I should have resumed leave uh, August 30th or so. Uh, but that had become the practice and experience during the, the, those days. Uh, officers retiring wanted to use their leave to work until the last day of their service. And so there were some officers who were also uh, using the, the, the leave period to work. I wasn't the only person. But was it, well, I mean, it's the practice, but was it the standard? Oh, the if you want to use, yes, if you, you uh, IGP will, may ask you to, to, to continue. But if they don't want you to use the sep your period or your leave period to work, they may ask you to proceed on leave. So you believe uh, you're an exception in that situation? Exception, yes, because uh, there were others. Others had used their period to work till the last day, and they were even given extension of service. Others also remained to the last day of their period and then they exited. And so when it was my turn and they asked that I should proceed on leave. You see the word, it is the word proceed on leave that makes the, a whole lot of difference. If they say proceed on leave, then it means your work is no more um, acceptable. It is not satisfactory and they do not want you to be there. So you, you feel it was an indirect critique of your work? E exactly, but I didn't know which areas they were criticizing me. I didn't know where I had gone wrong. Nobody told me no investigation was done, except that they said proceed on leave and hand over immediately. And you see, if you, if you work and you have not prepared to just leave, and they say proceed, you know, you need to do handing over. Mm -hmm. You need to sort one or two things mm -hmm. out. So if it comes, proceed on leave, they don't want you there, it's something. You need to rush and get things done and then move. You exited the service as the Director General yeah. of the Criminal Investigations Department. How would you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? How would you rate your performance it, it, as a it, it, it is difficult, but uh, maybe some of my colleagues might have been in a better position to maybe rate me. But there were so many achievements that we chalked uh, when we were in the service. Um, everybody has heard of Atai and uh, how he was arrested. Uh, there were so many of his accomplices who were earlier arrested. Hope Ahoga and Ku, people did not know because he did not survive much when he was arrested. Koti, all these were dangerous criminals who were terrorizing Accra and, 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 and Kaswa. And uh, it had to be us, some of us, who were able to have them arrested and then uh, I, I, I like, like I said, I hope, hope did not survive. People let's, let, let's talk about uh, the corruption tag on the police. As a man who has spent 29 years in the service, is the police corrupt? That is what they say. That is a perception. If you take the police from the road, if you take the police from investigating cases, 
maybe people will not see them to be corrupt. The police are on the road. Everybody sees them. You see, corruption is almost everywhere. There are people who are taking big, big, big money, but they are not seen, and so they are not tagged as corrupt. But police, on the road, somebody commits a road traffic offense. And then it is, it is even that person who commits a road traffic offense who wants to give money so that maybe the police allows him to go. So these are some of the things. If the police are not seen, if the police are not seen to be with the public, and, and uh, investigating cases, wrongdoing. You are investigating somebody who's committed some offense. And then that person may want his freedom. So he may tempt you and give money. And the police will take. So if these things are not there, I don't believe that the police will be tapped as corrupt. Exactly. That's so part what of is your way. personal opinion? Are they corrupt? I said that is the perception. And there are, so there are corrupt institutions that <laughs> don't come out like the police. Another issue that the public has with the police is, is the fact that uh, the, the, the public thinks the police are more on top of issues and investigations when it has anything to do with police officers, but are slower when it comes to the public. You see, how are policemen attacked? They are attacked mostly when they are on duty, is that not mm. so? And so if you see a policeman on duty and is shot and killed, maybe his, his colleagues are there. So immediately word reaches the command or those people around will send word to the command that this is what has happened. And then the investigative process will begin immediately. Unlike maybe a civilian who walks to the police and then reports that maybe somebody is dead. So who killed the person? It takes a long time for the police to investigate, find whoever did it, and then bring the person to book. But the police officer on duty, if he killed, if he is killed, and we are unable to get the perpetrators a, a, a whole lot of lack of confidence. And you agree. Even the police officer who is supposed to protect us has been killed and we are unable to find the killers. How much more a civilian or a citizen who is killed? So that also explains why maybe police are able to work faster, faster than in the other cases. Faster because as soon as a policeman is hurt, word gets there, and immediately they start looking for whoever did it. Unlike a crime complaint that has been lodged, you lodge, you explain, and then even the policeman has to understand whether there are merits in the case that you have lodged before we move on to, 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 to look for the perpetrator. So that is it. We police officers being killed, everybody, everybody is concerned, much more concerned than maybe somebody a civilian or a civilian who has been attacked or or, or, or killed because a policeman you, you see that the policeman who was killed at uh, tamale mm. everybody is talking about it now some people have been arrested and whether they committed a crime or not is also another thing and i think there are some difficulties with the investigation and uh, i think the prosecution as well everybody is talking about that why he was killed and his weapon taken away mm. We weapon taken away creates a, a problem because those who took the weapon away are also going to use the weapon to commit further atrocities. And that is why people are concerned. Let's stay on uh, public perception. Also with PIPS, the Police Intelligence and Professional Standards Bureau, uh, a lot of people think they're just a rubber stamp institution and they hardly, hardly penalize officers. What is your opinion? You see, I don't think so because I myself have been there before. When it was formed initially, uh, under President Rollins' regime. It was then called Special Police Command, SPC. And I happened to be one of the, I think, pioneers. Me, myself, and uh, Togbi Siri, who is now, uh, who was Mr. Abubaden, Mr. Mm -hmm. Patrick Kenyon Abuba. He, I was the second in command to him. Um, I don't think they have not been doing their job, but maybe the public is unaware of what they do. Because if a policeman, commits a mis misconduct, let's put it that way. It's referred to them to investigate, they make recommendations to the IG, and service inquiry is, is, is open or is held into the conduct. Whatever recommendations the service inquiry brings up is, is implemented. Maybe the reduction in rank, dismissal, uh, loss of uh, salary, uh, reprimand, all those things are there. But the public may not be aware 
what how, does how, that mean? How can the public not be aware if they are working in the interest of the public? Shouldn't like there be some communication? Shouldn't there be information out there? It depends. It depends on uh, the interest the public has in the case. If, for example, this uh, everybody is talking about the police officers who uh, helped, who were alleged to have uh, assisted this Nigerian suspect. Yeah, to suspect ask. Everybody is talking. People say the police have not taken any action. I am not privy to what action the police is taking and what actually happened. But if indeed the, 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 they assisted this guy to escape, definitely they will go through some service inquiry. And at the end of the day, I'm sure if it is true, maybe this missile will be recommended and then they, they will find their way out of the police service. Let's talk about the Ayawaso uh, West Wugomba elections and uh, the, the violence that's occurred over there. Now, um, the Commission of Enquiry has suggested the setting up of an independent police inquiry board. As a professional, what do you make of this suggestion? An independent body uh, outside the police that looks into police conduct. I think it's, it's, it's fair enough. It's okay. You think there should be a body like I that? I think so. Doesn't it further, you know, further foment the idea that the police cannot investigate themselves? The police can investigate themselves, yes. But whether the, there is confidence enough in the general public that the police will do a good job is also another thing. That is, that is the perception that police investigating itself they will not do a good job. So well, to satisfy the public, why not an independent body also look into some cases of misconduct against police officers? I agree with that. While you were the ge director general of the CID, you were directly assisted by Mami Adudankwa, Mami Ya Tiwa Adudankwa. When you left, she replaced you. Do you know her? Very well, I know her. Mm. What is your professional relationship with her? Oh, very, very good, very well. And um, I've stated elsewhere, somewhere, that uh, she is very supportive and very hardworking. At the time I exited, uh, the, some people interviewed me, and then I they asked whether she would be able to handle, and I said yes, provided, I said yes, but it is her rank, because at that time she was an assistant commissioner. And if you had commissioners and deputy commissioners, a number of them there, and then you put an assistant commissioner as a director general CID, it will look weight in some way. So I said she was support. She was very supportive. She was hardworking, and she she made my work easier. So well, she could handle, but the rank, and of course there were other officers who could have equally fitted in as as, as director general, if they are rank, if they had higher rank than Mami. Fortunately for her, she was promoted to deputy and then to commissioner. So that and, and, and she was promoted within a very short time. Yes, that is Do it. Do you think that was the right thing to I do? I say she has been lucky. I mean, that is what I say. She's been lucky to have, been, to have had promotion within a space of, uh, let's say, one year, four months or so. One year, five months. Because, uh, but was it a professional thing to do? I mean, uh, do we work on luck or do we work with competence? The, the, the promotion from assistant commissioner upwards is political because it is the president who approves finally. It seems recommendations are made by police council. So you think there was and some uh, uh, presidential influence there? I'm saying that uh, it is political from assistant commissioner up to commissioner and to IGP. Okay. So the assistant commissioner, promote, if you are recommended for promotion to deputy, police council will discuss and then it goes to the presidency and then if you get, you get. So it's more or less more political than, than, than uh, uh, let's in, say, administrative. In, in, during your time in, in the force, is it common to be jumped from ACP right to commissioner within such a short period? I've only, I've only seen one officer who jumped, who, was, who had a one jump to deputy commissioner when he was a chief superintendent. And that officer had that because of the work she, he did in the Syria murder of women in the early 1990s, mm. uh, 1990s up to, let's say, about 2000, there about uh, Ch Charles Kwanzaa, who killed about 31, or who was alleged to have murdered about 31 women in Kumasi and Accra. There was an officer uh, who did quite a good job, and then he was singled out and promoted from Chief Supu to Deputy Commissioner. He was not promoted to Assistant Commissioner, Chief Supu to Deputy Commissioner. But apart from that, I have not seen any other officer who, in a spell of one year, four months, he moves from assistant commissioner.
to, to commissioner. So we'd call her a special case then? Yeah, special case. Right. Now, let's look at, you've been following the kidnapping of the Takwadi girls, the whole case. Um, at a point during the investigations, she made certain pronouncements, she, she, which she claims was um, hope giving to the public. She said they knew where the girls were, the girls would be found and returned to their families, so the families should keep on keeping on. Uh, what do you make of her pronouncements, especially now that the DNA results have found that the girls have not, uh, are not alive? Yeah, the statement at that time, I think, was based on intelligence or information that was available to her. And they have said on some platforms that uh, maybe the police believe so much in the suspect that Udo to that time it was that Udo to worlds who had been arrested and then who uh, made the police follow or go on a wild good chase. I mean, I mean, the police went to Nigeria because of the leads yeah. that they had had from But a wild uh, goose chase means there was no uh, direct finding on that trail. So what, were those pronouncements necessary if you haven't actually found out that the girls are alive? I think she, she was of the view on the basis that or on the information that she had received from either his investigators who had also had uh, the information from the lead suspect that the ladies or the girls were in Nigeria. And uh, so if you begin to go to Nigeria and, and then the next time they tell you they are here and you go, you will be thinking that indeed the ladies were in Nigeria. And as I said, it depended on the information she, she had from the investigators. But was that supposed assurance necessary? to give to the public. For now, it has become not necessary, for now. Assuming that these DNA tests had not, f had not been positive and had not identified or had not indicated that these ladies or these bones that were found were the ladies' bones, uh, we, will still be, we will still not draw conclusions whether the girls are not in Nigeria. Let's assume you were back as the Director General of the CID. Given the same circumstances, would you make that assurance? Probably I would have said something different. Uh, maybe I would have, but again, it would have depended on the information available to me. Uh, if I wasn't sure, probably I would say we, we have some leads that we are following and probably later or shortly, sooner or later, we will have something positive for the public. That positive may not necessarily mean probably we will find the girls. Positive means probably we will find bodies or will find the girls or anything but so do you think she made a mistake in making those the, the, the IGP has I think apologized as in tea. so you think so she made a mistake she I think she was misled into believing that the girls were alive and then she she made she made that a, a lot of mistakes happen uh, you investigate if you are not careful and I always advise that we shouldn't give much credibility to what the suspect tells you during interrogation because anything he tells you you need to verify from some other source anything you provided by the suspect because he is a human being and he, depending on how he has been brought it's sociological environmental emotional and he can lie he can lie he can mislead and therefore if you are an investigator it is up to you to verify every information that is so she did not do her due diligence and I'm saying that there are people who are working for her. And probably they might have told her that, yes. Because as Director General CID, you are not directly in charge of the investigation. You have a lead investigator and some others who are helping the investigators. So probably they, they told her that, oh, the girls are in Nigeria. And be believing her investigators, he came out and probably made this pronouncement. A lot of people have called for her to resign or be compelled to resign. Do you share these sentiments? Um, but resign from the police service and become what I don't under get it. People resign say resign, the they should sack. But you see, she is the director general CID now. And um, if her work is not satisfactory to the public and to maybe the people who put her there, she can be reshuffled. Uh, director general CID, there are other schedules in the police service. We have Director General Welfare, Director General Finance, Director General National Protection Department, Director General Technical Services Operations. All these schedules are there. There are, I can count about 15 of the schedules. So if 
the public, it's the opinion of the public and probably the authority that be that she should she should no more be there, they can reassign her to one of these uh, schedules. Do you think she should be reassigned? Oh yes, if, no, no, not, uh, it depends. If they want to reassign her, fine. But if uh, people are not happy with her work. Then she should be reshuffled. She should be reshuffled, yeah, but not to be sacked or he should resign. You're still watching Hot Issues on TV3. My name is Nuong Falong. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still watching Hot Issues on TV3. My name is Nuong Falong. We're speaking with COP Bright Odru. So let's talk about the professional conduct of the police force. Um, we found out they, they released the DNA the same day they informed the families of the kidnapped girls about the results of the DNA. Was this the right thing to do? I learned there are three family liaison officers. Mm. Family liaison officers are normally very important when we are investigating major crime incidents or major crime cases uh, like murders, like robberies where uh, uh, relatives and families have been so traumatized. So we normally have family liaison officers who will be communicating between the investigators and of course the family. And so like when this uh, DNA results came, I would have probably expected the family liaison officers to probably have to have um, and, and gone to their families and then uh, uh, indicated or revealed the, the, the result of the DNA uh, in a manner that will, would have maybe brought some hope. Because to, it's to a sensitive family. issue. Yeah. And before you come out with such important results, Shouldn't the family be the first point of contact to let them know, okay, this is, this is the, the, the results we have before us and we're going to go public about it. And how does the public find out that the girls are dead before the family finds out that the yeah, girls yeah, are dead? Yes. Like you said, the family traumatized and then they should have maybe be the first to have received the result of the DNA before probably coming to the public. But so you agree the family should have received uh, the, that the, is, the information uh, yes, first? Yes, I, I, I agree that the family should have been told first. They should have been called and then briefed. And then they would have had some assurance and hope and confidence before maybe the general public should have been informed. But as I said, there is no lead uh, procedure for police in the release of some of these. But they already things. agreed with the families that they would tell them the results before coming public. Yeah. Now, you're a trained senior intelligence officer. When you look at the way, the manner in which the police have handled the case, would you have handled it differently? The DNA result, you see, when the bones were discovered, everybody was talking about DNA, DNA, DNA. But what was the DNA to achieve? The DNA would only achieve, or would the DNA would only tell us whether these skeletal remains that were found were those of the girls or not. That was, that was what the DNA was supposed to do. But we have heard, I think the IGP has also uh, spoken to the general public about some of the items that were discovered when these skeletal remains were picked from the cesspit. Earrings, the hair were all intact, uh, waist beads, um, yes. waist beads. And even in some one- clothing? Yeah, in one case, there were clothing. These items are still there. I don't think they have disposed of these items. So once these bones have been discovered alongside these other items, these other items were also found in, in the well, in the, in the, in the, in the manhole. Mm. And definitely it's an indication that these girls were either having them on or somebody might have thrown them into, into the well. And I have said that before even DNA, there should be physical identification. Even if you look at the teeth or the denture, if, so, if, there, if there is somebody you know, and then you find the skull and you look at the teeth, I think it is possible you will be able to see that, oh, this is my man, or this is my lady, or this is my, my relative. Apart from that, the hair, the hairstyle, the hair, the weave on, whatever. I'm sure the families would, would have been able to tell whether the weave one or the hair or this belong to this, that belong to that, or the earring or the beads.
So I had always said that the, the waiting for the DA, DNA fine, that adds scientific proof, scientific evidence which cannot be disputed. But what about the physical identification process? The things that were found. Wouldn't we want, wouldn't we address the family? Wouldn't we talk to the family? Wouldn't we appeal to the family that these are the things? And I say again, it is the family liaison officer. Immediately you pick the bones, you tell the family, these are the things we have found. Doesn't the family liaison officer depend on what they have been told by the police? B by the investigator, but he's part of the investigation yeah. team. So if the police hasn't communicated to the liaison officer, how does the liaison officer tell the family? No, what I'm saying is he's, so part, he's, he's part of the investigation team. Mm. And so he knows exactly what to tell the family. Not everything that you need to tell them. You, you need to tell them what they need to know. So, so like when these bones or skeletal remains were found with all these things, probably the, the, the liaison officer should have communicated or maybe the team should have maybe spoken to the, the family that these are the things that we have found. And we want you to come and see if they belong to... to, 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 to Let, let's look at the case in entirety. Are you satisfied with the way the case has been handled? There, 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 there are some lapses, I may, I may see, that the pronouncement that was made, the, 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 there seem to be, you see, we have a pathologist who is working on the bones, and I, from where I sit, I see that there is not that enough collaboration between the two. You have a field investigator, and you have a science, a scientific, or the crime lab, or the crime, the, the lab-based scientist. And in this case, it is a pathologist who is doing his work, who is examining the bones, determining when they were killed and all that. And it looks like he is doing his own work and somebody is doing his own work. And the field investigator is also doing his own work. But I will want to see them doing the work together. At least the field investigator must be seen to be taking a lot of notes from the pathologist and then asking questions. When were these girls killed? Even the, the basic question is, Pathologies, how do you know that these are women? Because if you say women, they are the girls, of course, then they are women. How would you tell from the bones that they are women? Collaboration. There is not that collaboration. Essentially, you'd have handled this case differently. Well, 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 it, yeah, it, probably it depends. It, again, it depends. Maybe I would have asked the pathologist, are you in, are you in, what do you call it? Are you in constant touch with the lead investigator? What have you found? Probably they, 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 they are doing that. I don't know because I'm not there. Probably so they you would are have doing handled that. the case differently, clearly. Probably, yes. We, would, we should not wait before we open up a murder docket. Once these bones have been discovered in the well, even if they are not those of the girls who were lost, they belong to somebody. So immediately so a, a murder docket should be should opened. Should be open. And so that we proceed to find out uh, who were dumped in the well. But again, like I said, assuming that the family had been approached and then persuaded and convinced and taken through some counseling to embolden them to come forward and look at these items, they would have been in a position to tell whether those items belong to the, 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 the girls or not. And so when this DNA result come and is positive, then there will be finality. See you, people, I told you. Final question. The acting IGP, Opong Bueno, are you satisfied with his work so far? Well, he's shown that um, he's concerned. At least he's shown more commitment towards... Has he shown, towards, com co has he shown know, competence or concern? Oh, he's a competent officer. I know him. He's my mate. We all joined the service at the same time. And I've known him for a long time. I've worked with him. He was my regional commander. How do you rate his work so far? Oh, he's okay. He's good. He, he, at least he's shown that he's so concerned about this case. And major crime investigation, even the top, the top must show concern. The top must show commitment. So you and I think and good, I, and but not best. Oh, best, better, better, best, <laughs> better, best. <laughs> which, which one? Which one is it? Be, better, good, better, be, best. Be, which of them? He has only been there for a uh, one month, so we cannot say best, but at least better. Initially, before you left, you were worried about uh, restoring public confidence in the police service. Do you think he has been able to do that? I think in the case of these girls, he has done well. 
going to them and then... Uh, but you recognize uh, key lapses in the entire process? Because he, the case has been there for long. He just came to inherit it. He just came. And he came at the time when the bones were discovered. Let's read him and again. Then, Good, better, best. Which I'm saying that he's just been in the office as IGP. Best may not be the, 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 the right thing for so him. So we'll he's okay. Be better. He's, so far, he's doing well. He's doing well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I see your people at the Thank you. And that's how we end Hot Issues on TV3 without settling on an exact rating for acting IGP upon Bueno. We have Bright Odro in the studio, COP Bright Odro, and he's hovering between good, better, um, of course, not best. Join us again next week on Hot Issues, same time, TV3.